Curtis has you covered all morning long. That's right, Jen Carfagno is here with a look at what's coming up at 9 a.m. And Jen, you're talking about one state. I, I thought this topic was a little strange, so I'm so curious of why you're talking about one state celebrating spring. Well, in particular, yeah, we're going to Michigan because okay. it's festival season. And, Ooh. you know, when you think of Michigan in the winter, right. you think of Grace ahead. It's probably, you know, a lot of folks haven't seen each other in months because they're all like hermits. And they're like, oh, hey, I we're, think we're back out. Big in Michigan. Yeah. So we're going to go find out why. All right. All right. We're Sounds looking good. forward to that, Jen. Alex, the whole team will be for the big events in your neighborhood. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. Baseball season starts with some cancellations for games right along the East Coast, and the radar shows us why. Yeah, we thought this was going to be the case, right? There was at least going to be delays. Yeah. They decided to, you know what, let's not even mess with it. Just postpone yeah. and wait for better weather. Yes, and so opening day will happen on Friday for a couple of cities that expected to today. And you can see the rain in the east here. I mean, that's the reason why there's no end to it. Yeah, it's kind of stuck. I mean, right, this is the front that a couple days ago yeah. was actually not farther away from where it is right now. And it's just hanging out. And that's trouble. That can bring a lot of rain and flooding. We've got a lot of colors pasted on this map as well. We're going to break these all down. You've got some spots with freeze concerns, spots with fire concerns, spots with snow concerns. And of course, the rains that we have it all. Lots and lots and lots to talk about. Well, yeah. despite the dreary skies mother nature be in time for tomorrow's home openers that were moved and pushed to tomorrow so first starting in new york city where we've got rain all day today so it's a good move to get the game out of here we've got temperatures hovering right around 50 i mean it's not going to be the coldest of days but it's not going to be warm either kind of raw out there with rain continuing we don't necessarily need the rain quite a surplus in fact march has been one of our top five wettest for a number of cities here along the east coast we look at the rainfall that we've had more than eight inches in New York City. Um, the month is not even over yet here, and we've more than doubled what you typically would get. Philadelphia, we had one of our wettest March days on record already this month, and there's more rain to come. And so flood watches um, are up in a few spots here. We've got rainfall in the order of one to two inches, especially for southern New England. It might be a little bit heavier up there. A very persistent feed of moisture. It's a tap right straight from the Gulf of Mexico, actually, that's kind of pointed right at this area. It's a steady rain for you around D.C. and New York City. You can see out here through Virginia Beach and Norfolk and the Hampton Roads area. We've got some heavier rain. Now, a lot of this is just offshore, literally just offshore. And so um, you, I know you see the radar and you see these bright yellows. And thankfully, we're not getting the worst of the weather everywhere on ground right now. But we are seeing some of that potential out there. In Boston, it's a steady rain for you this morning. Jumping down to New Jersey. Look at all this rain tracking up from Cape May to Atlantic City, heading up towards Rumson in New Jersey. You've got heavy rainfall. And then eastern North Carolina, this is one of the spots where we're seeing kind of the steadiest rain at the moment. Heavy downpours continuing. And this is where the flood watches are up around Norfolk, Elizabeth City, down towards Moorhead City. We've got that concern for too much rain causing problems. Now, the showers today could play a role coming in this weekend into Colorado eventually. First stop is going to be in the Sierra, as Alex talked about there. Some ski resorts there are also extending their season. Hey, this uh, Easter weekend is actually on the early side. Easter could be as early as March 22nd or as late as the end of April, I believe the 25th or, or 28th. So we're on the early side, which means, yes, skiing is an option if you may be getting the family together and doing something perhaps in the West. But we do have some rain to talk about here as well. Big trough over the West is going to be affecting your weekend plans. Sunday's forecast, snow across Nevada, parts of Utah, especially when you go up in elevation. Same thing in Colorado is going to be mainly elevation. But as we watch the pattern set up, we'll see our surface low. We're going to watch along this warm front for maybe a few showers, perhaps a few thunderstorms later in the day here on Sunday into northern Illinois, Indiana, maybe even Ohio. In the warm sector south of that, it's actually shaping up to be a very nice Easter Sunday. Got a lot of warmth. Temperatures going to be warming up very quickly into the 70s, even the 80s. Southwest, not quite the same, but we've got temperatures are going to stay stuck in the low 60s, like in Los Angeles, 60 with rain. And to um, Phoenix, we've got 63 with rain. Rapid City, 38 with snow, so not the best Easter Sunday forecast there, but we will be looking at some good weather, um, even in St. Louis, where 80 degrees is the forecast. Before we get in, some clouds thickening. You'll see that in Kansas City, too. The clouds do increase. Likely, though, um, at Kauffman Stadium, we'll be able to get the game in. 110 uh, first pitch and no rain in the forecast here. would we'll be later into the evening if we get that rain. But let's let's talk more about those chances of storm. Hey, what is your ideal baseball weather? Chase says my specific. very specific. I like it, too. <laughs> Well, all you have to do is hit the threads. Uh, you can share your comments. Let us know uh, what you're feeling.
there are so many different types of eclipses. In April, we'll witness a total solar eclipse, the first to come over the U.S. since August of 2017. And before that, you have to go back to 1979. It's been a minute. Mm -hmm. or it can be a minute, it right? It can be a minute, right? <laughs> Meteorologist Paul Goodlow details these rare and wonderful celestial events presented by Bristol Meyer Squibb. Right, because we got a bunch of years until the next one. So um, over the U.S. anyway, there's eclipses every year. It's just that so many times are over the ocean that you no don't want to see them. Exactly. Yeah. So yes, indeed, you got to catch it if you can. Uh, and you can see there's the path of totality that it st extends from south portions of Texas all the way up into New England. And so there's a wide area that is going to be involved in at least that path of totality. Mm -hmm. But there will be able you'll be able to see at least a partial eclipse. Yeah. Even while outside of that. Yeah. All of North America will see at least a partial. But there is something special about that path of totality. That's really where you get the show. So, of course, cloud cover is going to make all the difference. You know, we've been showing you cloud cover climatology because really, you know, up until you get within uh, even a couple of days, it's hard to know cloud specifically. So, in general, you'd think you'd have a better shot over Texas and Arkansas compared to the Northeast. But this year... <laughs> I mean, well, it depends on the weather pattern. Yeah, I mean, it's so hard. I mean, think about it. I mean, we always talk about, okay, the chances for the rain. It's hard. To, can we pinpoint where clouds are going to? I mean, that is right. just, it's really an, an impossible task to take. But again, right now, the forecast is calling for Monday for at least the chance for some shower activity kind of in that uh, range here across the Midwest and down to portions of the Gulf Coast. So at the moment, looking like a better chance of no clouds up to the north. But look, low clouds, high clouds, this can all be a factor. Clouds clearing, you know, the eclipse itself or the change in sunlight can also be a factor in clearing clouds. So we've got the forecast right now for Monday, April 8th in Dallas with the chance of thunderstorms. How frustrating is that forecast? That is frustrating because, I mean, at that point, I mean, clouds could come at any point, right? With the hit and miss showers right. and thunderstorms, you just hope that they just miss. I mean, there'll be yeah. how many days have we been out there in the sun and you're like, oh, there's a big cloud coming overhead, yeah. moves over the sun and then moves away. And so if that happens when the, to the eclipse and it, is happening, you're good. And it would have to stay there for three minutes and 41 seconds. <laughs> That's the amount of time of totality in Dallas. It'll, it'll vary depending on where you are. Um, Indianapolis, we've got showers in the forecast in the morning. Eclipses after lunchtime here. Do we clear it out in time? <sighs> <laughs> These are all questions. These are all questions and really too difficult to answer right now. You want to keep tuning back in for um, the in some spots. Yeah, and you know what, Alex and Jen, of course, we know we love trains on this show. And if you're in Kansas City, one of my favorite cities of all time, and love trains, listen up. Kansas City Northern Miniature Railroad is hosting a special Easter train this weekend. This sounds fun. You can ride yeah. the rails this Saturday with special conductor, the Easter Bunny. It will be the perfect <laughs> way to celebrate the holiday early. A Sunday it looks to be a little wet and soggy. You got to look at that forecast for you. Overall, considering Easter's a little on the early side this year, we are going to be looking, I think, at some pretty warm temperatures. There's a, a couple exceptions. Yeah, not so bad. I mean, if you look in the bigger picture, we're not dealing with a ton of rain in a whole lot of places. Yes, we have our spots, parts of the Ohio Valley and the West, but overall, Jen, not a bad Easter Sunday or Saturday, actually, leading up right. to it. I mean, Saturday, a lot of upper 70s, mm -hmm. low 80s across the uh, Southern Plains into the Southeast. Northwest looks good. We're drying out. We're going to have sunshine coming back to Seattle, but all the action is going to be with our big trough across the west and the low pressure that forms here in the lee side of it. Yeah, this is an interesting day on Sunday in terms of severe weather chances. The Storm Prediction Center did say perhaps right along this warm front we could get some thunderstorms maybe at night. Uh, but also, while not shown here and not outlined explicitly by SPC, we may see some farther out in the plains near that area of low pressure. We'll talk about that a little bit more at 50 past the hour. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of warmth out there. I yeah. mean, this is your forecast on Sunday temperature wise. A lot of 70s and 80s all across the deep south here, mm -hmm. maybe in a few 90s in West Texas, Florida are going to be in the 70s and 80s. And look, Florida was so hot and humid, actually kind of sticky yesterday. It'll be a much nicer kind of 80 plus temperature. And you can see that that warmth in the southeast is associated with also the cold and snow in the west. The trough west ridge east pattern is shaping up mm -hmm. for us on Sunday. Heavy snow at the higher elevation. Yeah, and so with this with this trough across the west, it's going to mean temperatures on the cooler side. Phoenix, mm -hmm. example, 63 degrees, Los Angeles. Easter Sunday brings rain. You might have been thinking about having your Easter dinner outside. Oh, I don't know that I'd plan on that. Have an option. Yeah, and we also had some showers and thunderstorms later on Sunday across parts of the Midwest, including, hey, maybe on Kansas City as well. Hailing the return of warmer weather, longer days, and spring flowers. Now, the Great Lakes State will 
still be swimming in the festivals as we swing into spring. Now, earlier we spoke to Kelly Wagamat with Travel Michigan to, to learn a bit more about the fun on the horizon. I know, I'm down for the carnival too. Now, beyond the blooms, you know, Michigan is home to several dark sky festivals. And of course, we got the eclipse on the way, so there's got to be a, a lot of interest in astronomy related events. Why should stargazers consider a trip to the Upper Peninsula? Oh my gosh, wonderful. Uh, you know, we love our music on this show, and Detroit has a festival dedicated to the tunes. So tell us about the Movement Festival. Yes, so everyone. All right, good stuff. Well, thanks so much, Kelly Wagamat there with Travel Michigan for joining us there. Now, next hour, we're going to take a look at even more festivals happening this weekend across the nation. You know, sadly, Groundhog Day is over, but and we're asking you, what is your ideal baseball weather? Ah, uh, well, Steve, I don't care what else is happening. But what if I'm it's, good. What if it's chilly? Would you rather be in the sun? No. No. Take a jacket. You'll be all right. <laughs> Absolutely. Take love from it, Alex. Take a jacket. <laughs> it takes care of almost everything. You're in the shade. If it happens to rain, you get a little break from that. If it's too to be in the shade. So everywhere I go, I always have like a big tote bag with all my jackets. I, I do always have jackets. And you never know what kind of jacket you're going to need. But it's tough because you can't bring like these bags into that the is stadium. True. And that is true. So you just got to wear it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can go to Threads, wear all the jackets. Uh, go to Threads, send us your comments. You can share your pics and video with us using the hashtag YesTV. Groundhog Day? Hmm. This should be a contest. Phil Jr. would be the obvious. Then what's the other Phil one? Phil Phyllis. Phil the first, Phil the second. <laughs> 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 or Phil the second, Phil the third, I guess it would be. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, that's phenomenal. Good stuff, good stuff. Uh -oh. Well, the, to the town of Punxsutawney. <laughs> that's in your neighborhood. The Weather Channel has you covered from coast to coast. Yep, and the baseball season starts with some cancellations, unfortunately, for games along the East Coast because of the rain. Look at the radar. tells us why. Yeah, you can see it up and down the East Coast, and you may think, oh, well, it's right along the coast. Yeah. We should get out of here in time for the games. Mm, not it's quite. It's been here for a minute, too. Yeah. I mean, it hasn't budged since last night. That's right. And a lot of times, you know, to your point, that we see things moving across the map from west to east quickly. This one is not moving. It's stuck. Yeah, it's affecting up from south to north. We're going right. to talk about that coming up. Well, despite the dreary skies, Mother Nature won't pitch a shutout on today's